Hey everyone, it's Deja from CrochetEverAfter.com. Today is the newest motif of the month. It's June 2016 and I'm calling this one a hexagon flower. So this is a six-sided motif and then it kind of has like this, if you use two different colors or even three, you kind of get this little flower inside of the hexagon. So call this the hexagon flower. You can use anywhere from a five millimeter to a six millimeter hook. I'm gonna make the sample with a 5.5 USI hook, but I'm gonna show you the difference in size and um, why you might wanna use a five millimeter hook as opposed to a six millimeter hook near the end of the video. So normal worsted weight yarn in two or three colors, whatever you like, and download the pattern below and we'll get started. So the first thing we're going to do is put a slip knot on our hook. So I always hold my yarn with a loop in my hand and I turn the hand with the loop down and then I reach through to grab the working yarn. You can see my tail there. Grab the working yarn and then pull on your tail to close it down. Easy way to make a slip knot. Then I grab the working yarn, there's my tail, to close it down. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make an open hole for our motif. So we're going to chain six. So that'll give us a pretty large open hole. So we're going to yarn over, turn our hook down, pull through the loop, and then push it into the shaft. Yarn over, turn it down, pull through, and push. And that is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then we're going to join it with a slip stitch. If I can get some more yarn. And the first chain we made so just look for the loop that's over here and we're gonna push our hook through anywhere because it's gonna be covered and then we're gonna yarn over turn the hook down to catch it pull through and then pull through the loop on your hook for the slip stitch so now you can see the hole is pretty large it's easy enough to see to be able to work through for round one which we'll start right now so we're gonna chain four for our first part of round one. So what this does is it counts as a treble crochet. So chain fours are usually the size of a treble crochet. So you wanna make them um, the same size that your treble crochet would be. So if you, if you crochet loosely, your chains are gonna be a little loose. If you crochet like me where it's the same size as your shaft, they're all going to be pretty uniform in size and not really a whole lot of um, space showing between them. So I'm going to do two trebles inside of the ring. So I yarn over twice and then insert the hook through that center ring. I'm just going to move the tail out of my way. I yarn over and I pull up a loop. And you'll see that all of my loops, I'm making them the same size as my shaft. So I'm going to be working off at a 45 degree angle. Some people pull them up like this. Either way is correct. It's just a different look to your finished project. So mine's going to be more dense looking. Somebody that pulls up, it might be a little bit more loftier, a little more space in between. So whatever you like best, you do. So I'm, the reason this is called a treble is because you're working off three or you're working off two loops at a time three times so treble for three so we yarn over and we pull through the first two so that's one we yarn over pull through the next two that's two and then we yarn over and pull through the last two and that's three so that's our treble so it doesn't go with the number of yarn overs because we only do two yarn overs for treble but we work off in groups of two three times <laughs> hopefully that makes sense just in case anybody was wondering where the treble came from. So I do two. Now I'm going to do a chain one. So you can see that my chain four is about the same size as my treble. So if you're doing a more lofty treble, just make your chains a little bit more spaced out. So I did my chain one, and now I'm going to do three more trebles. Oops, I only yarned over once. Yarn over twice. Insert. Pull up yarn over. So notice that I turn my hook down and I'm at a 45 degree angle to my stitch to pull through the two easily and to keep all of my loops the same size. So when I keep my loops the same size as my shaft I get consistent stitches. So all my stitches are the same height. Um, if you do a more loose 
treble. If you're used to pulling it up a certain height, then your stitches will be consistent too. It's just that they'll be taller. But if you're new to crocheting and you don't have down, you can do another chain one. We're just doing this around um, six times. So we're gonna have three or six groups of three trebles with a chain one in between. So if you are new to crocheting and you pull up as you're working, so here I am pulling up, and you don't have a set amount that you pull up, so you can see the difference in height here. If you don't have a set amount, then your stitches will be kind of up and down all over the place. So using your shaft is a good way to get your stitches consistent. So just keep enough tension on your working tail to keep the loops the same size as your shaft. I'm not holding it super tight, so I don't squish my stitches down. I'm just holding it enough that they stay the same size as my shaft. And that will give you more even stitches. So if you have a, if you're like, I cannot get my stitches to look all the same size, try the shaft and that will help you. So I've got three, I'm gonna do three more. Make sure you put a chain one between each one or I'm gonna do three more sets, not just three trebles. So I'll come back as soon as I finish the third set. Alright, I just finished my sixth group of three, so you can see this chain four counts as a treble. So I have one, another group, two, three, four, five, and then six. So we have just that chain one, so it's not a huge space, but we're going to be using it for the next round. So we're going to join with a slip stitch at the top of our chain four. You'll notice I pulled this over because this very first chain is getting covered by my trebles. So I need to pull this over. This is all, this can all just slide over because usually you'll have kind of a big gap right here. It's just because of how you're making the stitches. Just slide everything over. And then we're gonna count one, two, three, four. And we're gonna slip stitch right at the top of that chain four. All right, so now this next round is a little different. We're gonna turn our work because we wanna go right into Oh, you know what? See, I made a mistake. So it's a good thing that we have that round because after this group of three, I forgot to do my chain one. So make sure that you're putting that last chain one before you join because you want to chain one between every group of three. So again, I'm going to go back and do that slip stitch. And then I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to start just single crocheting into this chain one space. So I'm just gonna insert my hook through, pull up, and chain one. I don't need to do, I'm sorry, a single crochet. I don't need to do a chain one because I want these just low. I don't need them for a specific round. They don't need to be seen because we're gonna be covering everything we're doing right here with the next round. So now I'm gonna chain five. One, two, three, four, Five, and that's gonna span the amount plus a little extra over those three trebles and then I'm gonna do a single crochet in the next chain one space so we're doing this because we're gonna be using this loop here for our next round so again chain five three four five chain one or I keep saying chain one for my single crochet single crochet into your chain one and then keep on doing that all the way around till we get back to the beginning. Okay, I got my last chain five. Now I'm going to just slip stitch into that very first single crochet. I don't need to make another single crochet because what's important for this round are these chain fives. The single crochets are just there to anchor them so that we can make them. So we don't need another one. So we're just gonna single, I'm sorry, I keep getting my stuff mixed up today. We're gonna slip stitch. And then we're going to fasten off because we're going to switch over to our white color or whatever color you want to use. Just have to find my scissors. Where did they go? There we go. And then we're going to join our white. And we're going to join with a standing half double. So we're going to do a slip knot to get it ready. 
And if you've watched my other motif videos, I do a lot of standing stitches for joining colors. And what it is, is we just start working the stitch that it says. So we need a half double crochet. So we're gonna pretend like this yarn is already attached to our chain five. So normally you would do a slip stitch to join it and then you would do a chain two for a half double. But this way we leave no, we have no chain join. So there's only, the only thing that's gonna have a chain standing stitch, which is what we call the beginning of a round where we use a chain instead of a stitch. That chain four is the only one we're gonna have for this motif. So we're gonna yarn over, just like we're doing a half double crochet, hold onto your tail, otherwise it'll just slip right off. So yarn over, make sure you have two loops on your hook, hold onto that tail, insert your hook into this chain five spot, pull up a loop. Now we have three loops on our hook, just like for a half double crochet. Yarn over, turn your hook down so you can get through easy, and pull through all three. So now we started and joined our new color with a half double crochet. I pulled it all the way over because we're gonna fill in all of this chain five with more stitches. So I'm just giving us some room. So now we're gonna do two double crochets. So yarn over again, insert your hook. So remember with the treble, we worked off groups of two, three times. Double crochet, we work off groups of two, two times. So yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the next two. Do another one of those. Then we're gonna do three treble crochets, so yarn over twice, insert, pull through, pull through, pull through, get some more slack. Another one. So we're kind of doing a mirror. So this is the top of our group of stitches, this second treble. Now we're gonna do another treble to start going back down. So we had two double crochets, so we're going to do two double crochets on this side. Another double, and then a half double, like we had at the beginning. And that's what we're going to do around. We're not going to do anything in the single crochet spot, we're just going to totally skip over it and start our next group in the next chain five. So another half double, two doubles, three trebles, two doubles, and a half. So we're just going to do this six times around and then we'll meet up at the end of the round to fasten off and oops, start our last round. And remember these all slide so if they're starting to get a little spaced out just pull them over and they'll be good to go. Alright I got all six done. So I have the last half double crochet and then I'm just going to join to the first half double crochet. So we have a nice V up on top to join to, so just insert your hook under both loops. Just pull your tail out of the way, yarn over, pull through, and pull through. Then we're going to fasten off because we're going to go back to blue for our last round. Or whatever color you want. Alright, so we're going to do a standing treble this time. So same thing, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. And then begin like we're going to start a treble crochet. So we're going to yarn over twice, hold on to your tail. And then we're going to start in any of the half double crochets, lost one, at the beginning of the petal. So any of these very right hand half double crochets. So I'm not going to start at this one since that's where the join was. I'll start over here so it's a little easier to see. So we have the half double, the stitch you're working into, because you have one on the left and one on the right, it's always to the right. That is always the stitch unless you're left handed, then it's going to be to your left because you're working that way instead of that way. But it's always going to be the one on the side that your hand is. So whatever hand you're using to work your crochet, go to the stitch on that side. So you'll see it's coming out over here and to the right. So I'm going to insert my hook. I have my two loops already on. Pull up the loop and then start working them off two at a time like for a treble. So now we have our very first stitch. 
it's not a chain so it doesn't look funky it looks just like our regular trebles and then we're gonna move on to kind of doing the reverse of what we did for the petals so the only thing that's gonna stay the same is we're gonna to do double crochets in our double crochet so we're gonna do one double crochet in this next stitch that was a double crochet before and then another double crochet in the stitch that was a double crochet and then we have these three trebles so we're doing the reverse we're going to put half doubles because notice we put a treble in the half double so we're going to put a half double in the treble so it's kind of bringing it back down so three half doubles yarn over notice i always turn my hook down to pull through it gets through all of the loops easy then we're going to do two doubles to our doubles that are below and then we're at the half double so we're going to do another treble yarn over twice and treble oops i'm gonna get a tail in there and we're going to keep doing that all the way around so just like the last round we're just skipping whatever we're just going straight into the next half double and doing a treble then two doubles, three half doubles, two doubles again, and then one treble. So same thing. And this will give us little kind of hexagon shapes. So they, these trebles here are kind of are going to be our points of the hexagon. So keep doing that all the way around. We're on my last treble crochet and then we're going to join up and fasten off. So if you want this, if you're making a blanket or anything, when you join it, you're going to use the trebles as kind of the points for your hexagon you can always blocks it blocks <laughs> block this beforehand and it's gonna be um working between the two trebles is where you want the points to come out of so pull on the little spot between the two trebles and pin that so you can get a good hexagon i have one that's already woven in and I also used a J hook, so I wanted to show you the difference in size and the difference in density of using two different size hooks. So this is only a half a millimeter off. This is a 5.5 millimeter or USI, and this is a six millimeter USJ. So if I lay them on top of each other, you can see that I get quite a size difference. So it if you're making a blanket and you want it to turn out faster use a bigger hook and it's still pretty um the the same density you can see there's a little bit more that you can see through with the j hook as opposed to the i but it's not that different it's not super noticeable so using just a different hook can get you a way different size. So usually this kind of worsted weight yarn, they recommend anywhere from a five millimeter or an H to a six millimeter J. So the only difference is, is that it's gonna be more dense, the smaller the hook, it'll be less, um, less drapey. So it'll be very stiff if it's an H or a five millimeter, and this J will be more drapey and less stiff. So that's the difference between the hook sizes and sizes. This, the H would be even a little bit smaller than this. So if you're making blankets and you want them to go much faster, use the largest hook that the ball band recommends and you'll get a bigger blanket quicker. So that is the motif of the month and thank you for watching.